Oh, actually, first, thank you all for coming. Yeah. We're always super excited to do ice cream every month. It just feels like the first time. Yeah. I like can't sleep or eat for a week. It ruins my life, but it's all good. I mean, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> this was your idea for the record. Yeah, I totally know. It was your idea. So thank everyone. Thank Anar for this. Thank you. I just wanted to eat ice cream. Um, yay! So our first announcement isn't so happy. Um, I don't. For those of you who have um, been to ice cream from the beginning, you might remember. Uh, open mic regular of ours, Sylvie Ann Murray. She is a really wonderful person. She would come up here like so fearless and like, you know, a lot of us are really young and she's like had to been in her 60s and she didn't care. She was totally with us. Awesome. Um, last week she passed away from a heart attack and so we're really sad and so I just, she's in our thoughts today. Um, she was a part of the Melbourne community. Uh, she can all the open mics and none of them will be the same. Sylvian. And her book is on the ice cream social pool picks table if anyone wants to take a look at it and spend a little time with her words and remember her. You want to talk about October? Oh my gosh! So we're really excited about October. If y'all remember, we were the only ones that messed up for Halloween, but it's a Halloween party again next this year um, and we're going to have prizes. Um, I know we had a winner with a pug mask. Dalton. <gasps> Dalton. <laughs> and another winner. I know your name, but I didn't it. But I, <laughs> she won oh, first hey. prize. Yeah, she came in as a deer. Um, but yeah, there's like candy that lasts for several months and you gain winter weight and then you have to hide it. You gotta join a fitness group in January. But um, <laughs> we've got prizes, um, dress up. It's really fun. I'm gonna be like, dressed as Tina Belcher. Y'all wanna see yes. that, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm hunting for a good Ghostbusters costume, so <laughs> inspired. But um, so yeah, come next month because it'll be really, really fun. Uh, and now we're gonna start the open mic. Yeah, um, we've got a lot of ice cream veterans. Um, but to start out our open mic tonight, we've got a newcomer we're excited to introduce. Um, please give it up for Jill Davis. get through this. Um, my poem is called, if I can remember the name, On Justice, Slavery, and Frederick Douglass. Torn ground, soaking up fallen drops of their warm red blood. They are kicked, beaten, and mangled. Can you see the chains of American slavery? for the black browed, broad-nosed children of God, some tasting the tainted, stagnant breath of death. Where is the outrage? Oh, say, can you see? What light? What light? What right? What right? Darkness covers the dawn. Darkness covers their darkness. To be battered and bruised so, families ripped apart, See the red, white, and blue stripes waving in the chilling wind, blanketing those who did nothing to deserve that coat of arms. Those stripes flayed into a million soft-fleshed, dark-skinned backs. Oh, say, can you see? By what light? What light? A man made into a slave, then a slave made into a man. Now it is pale flesh crawling and crying out. Fight, black man, fight. Oh say, can you see a black man transformed from a brute into a man, a man? Oh say, can you see by the noonday's piercing light what right, what right in the home of the free?
Uh, so this is like really new and I'd been trying to write a poem with this title for like 11 months and then it finally happened and it was not the poem I thought it was going to be at all. Uh, Hawks don't circle. The cold spring water knifing my skin was punishment for not calling off the trip though I knew I was going to leave him. Clouds blocked the warmth and the light. I kept my sunglasses on so he wouldn't see the truth making crow's feet in the corners of my eyes. After my fourth beer of the morning, I dredged up some faith. By the grace of the devil's river, I'd find a way to make things work. We watched a hawk float on the thermals. I'd always thought they'd circle. I'd always assumed I could find a solution that wouldn't mean separation. Two weeks prior, I'd been corrected on the subject of hawks. I opened my mouth to tell him what I'd learned. Before I could get a word out, he turned his head and said, I know. Isn't it all these open seats at the front, you guys? Please, come on up. I moved my backpack. <laughs> another veteran, um, sister here. Please give it up for Tu Yin Wen. I wrote this with my eyes closed because I was trying to sleep, like listen to two videos on YouTube about meditation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like for dream realization and wish fulfillment and like every night. I'm I'm not sure if Chandra hears it through the door. But. <laughs> and then the thought came, like, jealous of death. Took my mom early. That country I haven't been to yet, but wanted to visit so badly back then. Jealous of death. Let go of my green mask of faux peace-seeking missives, I choose life instead. Thank you. Next up, we have another veteran. Y'all are just coming out of the work tonight. Jenny Quito. small talk while I was waiting to look up my phone. Okay. This one's called Persephone Sleeps. What else is there to do when all left over is seen from under? Some life asunder. She sees, sees memory, a sea anemone. She breathes as seconds repeat like her heartbeat beat drowns out mermaid murmur from her last ground symphony above. She echoes inside ears for years, like a pebble's skip loop skips sustained sounds sip circles that can never quite sink far enough to muffled cacophony, cochlea of drums on coffin, liquid melatonin drams, damned dreams, sleep wake, and seven evenings sing sad siren songs. Threnodies she weaves that creep in Solstice sleep, slip hands tight around her neck, tight hard hands against her chest, shallow breath, breath strokes at night to lost melodies. A glimmer that leaves her. She floats just under life. She floats just above salt saline she leans seeped from eyes to her earth. Buried far enough under to forget who she cried for. Close enough above to know why her sky rains days away. Um, just like throw your hand up. I don't know your name. 
make up a name for you. Um, but uh, our last open micer is named um, Liz Moskovitz. Please forgive me. <laughs> Please join us. Uh, this is called An Understanding, and it's for my father. Tomorrow, you will receive your mother's ashes in the mail. You already know you cannot look just yet. Bone dust, a mother's life, and a black plastic bag will have to wait. A mother who survived Germany's crematorium only to end up like this. It is morbid but we are good at that. We know it is possible to break our own hearts each and every day. We turn on lights in empty rooms to feel less alone. We count our ribs and pinch our cheeks to remind us that we're still here. We rejoice in the taste of pizza and the look of words on a page. We are made from dust and to dust we shall return. A prayer from my childhood murmured in temple alongside you. We are the light and the shadow that finds it. On a sunny afternoon, I stood on our rooftop and watched ashes from burned towers blow playfully in the breeze. We are nothing but the wind that moves us. I make you silly birthday cards, pictures of us floating over skylines I used to play with sand from your father's grave, kept in a small box in our living room. I pretended it was magic dust. I don't think I ever told you how I watched the grains pour slowly from my fists as I whispered secret spells. A story can be a gentle touch or the mouth of a monster. You give me sepia tone photos of grandma in gilded frames and I hang them in my room so she and I spend more time together than we ever did before. I am always reminded how fragile we must be to only know ourselves, to still forget who we are. Poetry. Don't bother me with dreams. The heart is not a headless beast. It's buried underneath. Thank you. <laughs> 